Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up API Gateway Access Login for your HTTP API. So we're going to go into the API Gateway section of the console and I've already gone ahead and created a API already. I'm not going to walk you through the steps to do that. I'm going to assume you've already done it. And in my case, I have a service integration on this API Gateway endpoint. Uh, if we go to the integration section, you can see this is currently hooked up to a Lambda function and you can see the settings here. So this will invoke uh, a Lambda function upon hitting this API. So in order to get started with access logging, we first need to enable it. And in order to do that, you want to go to your left hand side here where it says monitor and go to the logging section. By default, all logging is disabled. It's something that you have to explicitly enable in order to get it to work. So it's asking us to select a stage. I'm just going to select our default stage here since that's all we have. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on select. And at this point, it says that our access logging is disabled. So we do need to change that. And when, the way we do that is we go to the edit section over here. And then we need to click on this little toggle box here to enable access logging. Now it's asking us uh, what is the log destination or where do we want to send our logs to? Now it's asking us for the ARN of that CloudWatch log group. Now CloudWatch is used to collect logs amongst other things, uh, but we do need to have a log group in order for it to be the destination for this access logging here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pause and go do that really quick. I have a tab open in the CloudWatch section and we're just gonna go to the log group section over here and we're gonna create a new log group specifically for this API. So in order to do that, go ahead and click on create log group in the top right here. You can just name this whatever you want. Uh, we can call this API gateway demo log group and uh, retention setting, that's not necessary. You can leave KMS key as, as a blank here. Go ahead and click on create in the bottom right now. Now we should have a new log group created. So just find it here. I'm just gonna use the, the filter here to find mine really quick. And we need to go ahead and grab the ARN or the Amazon resource name, which is right over here. It's this string as it exists here. So we're just gonna copy that to our clipboard. We're gonna go back to our API gateway uh, section or get API gateway tab. And we're just gonna paste in our log destination now. Uh, now it's asking us for our log format. So you have four different options here. You have CLF, JSON, XML, or CSV, you're probably going to be using either JSON or CSV here. Now there's a whole bunch of different things that you can log as part of access logging. And if we click on this URL here, it gives us some really great documentation. Now this documentation tells you all about the different options that are available to you in terms of what you would like to log. Uh, so you can get stuff like account ID, the API, stuff on the authorizer. If you're using this in conjunction with something like Cognito or some kind of custom authorizer, you can get those details in the access logs as well and if you scroll down here there's a whole bunch of other ones domain name errors um, there's other stuff for identity that's not going to be really useful in our case I wanted to find one uh, which is going to be useful for our lambda function here and that is this one here context integration request ID now what this is going to do when it's integrated with lambda functions is that it's going to show us the request ID of the lambda function in the log line under our access logs so we can match the log line of the access logs and the log line of our Lambda function. So I'm just gonna copy this one to my clipboard. Uh, you can check out a bunch of these. I'm gonna show you a couple in this demonstration, but you can add a whole bunch if you'd wish. Um, so let's go back to API Gateway. Now, a cool thing is that if you just click on any of these, it gives you kind of a base uh, to work with here. And these are some very common ones, things like request time, method, routes, protocol, if it's post, get, whatever, response, length, request ID. Also has source IP in here. Um, normally I'd leave this on, but for this case, I don't wanna have to edit it out uh, to hide my IP. Uh, so I'm just gonna delete this really quick. And I also want to put in that context um, integration request ID so that we can pair this up with Lambda function invocation request IDs as well. Uh, now I would suggest you to not use CSV unless you have a reason to do so. And that's because the log lines that you get by default, they don't have the like the field name that you're logging. So it's just gonna have a number here, for example, for request time. It's not gonna tell you this line is with reference to request time. If you do it with JSON, you get all the keys of all the different um, fields that you're gonna be having here. So for example, request ID comes and then here's the value. IP comes and then here's the value. Um, hope that made sense. And it looks like I actually, since I changed it to JSON, I need to strip about this again and I'm gonna just put um, 
what was it? Integration request ID, integration request ID. Make sure everything is in quotes there. And we also need this. Okay, um, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save now. And so this has been set up correctly. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go and invoke this Lambda function from Postman. So we're gonna be using Postman to test this out. So first I need to go and grab the URL of this endpoint. So we're gonna go to stages and it's right here. So we're gonna copy that to clipboard. And I think the route that I created was yeah, slash foo. So I'm gonna just go into Postman really quick and I'm just gonna swap this out. This is something I was doing before. We're just gonna call this slash foo. And as you can see, I'm passing in something here. This is a post request. I believe this was a post request too. It was, so we should be good there. Let's go ahead and click this a few times, make sure it worked. You see we're getting something back from the Lambda function down here. Let's click it a few more times. Okay, that's looking good. And now if we go into our log section, uh, we should see in a moment or so the different log streams that got created. Sometimes it takes a moment. There you go, you just saw it happen right in front of your eyes. Um, so we're gonna click on this one here. This is the log stream that's gonna contain the access logs from invoking through Postman. Let's see what we got here. Okay, cool. So here are the different um, items that we're logging here. So we get the request ID. This is the API gateway request ID, not the Lambda function request ID. We get the request time, we get the method, um, the route key, the status, protocol, response length. And this is the Lambda function request ID, which I'm gonna copy to my clipboard. Um, now you will notice here that we don't have the body that was sent to the API. So for example, I sent here, customer ID ABC123. And for the life of me, I couldn't find a entry in this documentation that has that information, and I don't think it exists. One way to check for sure would be to put all of these into your request logs or your access logs and see if that uh, see if it contains it somewhere, but I'm 90% sure that it doesn't exist. I read each one of these in detail and it wasn't showing up. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to show you, actually let's go into CloudWatch, uh, the integration request ID, because in this log line, we don't really have details of what our Lambda function did, right? All we really have is the response length. So what if now I wanna pair this log entry with something that happened in my Lambda function logs? Well, there's a pretty easy way to do that. Since we're logging the integration request ID, this should be straightforward to find the corresponding Lambda function invocation. So I have my Lambda function open over here, and this is the function that I paired it with, uh, demo Lambda that I have it here. And if we go into the monitor section here and we look at the logs, I should probably open this in CloudWatch. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that really quick. So the reminder, this is the logs of our Lambda function now. And if we go into the most recent invocations here, and I'm just gonna control F for that request ID, there you go, there's the request ID of the Lambda function. So if we were logging anything here in this invocation, it would all be available for us. But since I'm not doing anything in this Lambda function, it doesn't show any relevant details. But I just wanted to show you that in action as well. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you really quick is just what happens if we change the access logs to other format types. So let's go back and go to logging and you can edit this stuff at any time, by the way, it's pretty um, flexible. Let's change this to CSV and I'll show you why I don't like it. And again, let's just take out my IP address here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Okay, that's good. And let's go invoke our API again. So one, two, three. Okay, that's good and back into CloudWatch now. These are the Lambda function logs, not what we're looking for. These are the ones that we're looking for, API Gateway Demo Log Group. And sometimes it does take a moment, like I said. So here's the most recent one. If you sort it by time, 1617, we're gonna click on this and here's what you get. So this is, okay, it has all the information in front of you here, but it doesn't really tell you what each of the fields are that it's logging. So like, what does this correspond to? I know it's the path, but it would be nice if it told me the field. Like, what is this number 200? Probably 200 okay. What does 26 mean here? I don't know. Um, so that's the, the reason that I like to use JSON. You get all that data right in front of you so you can easily tell what's what. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.